Time for the only radio show of its kind. Auctioneers of antiques, collectors of cool, veterans of vintage. It's the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. For the next hour, enjoy great information about buying and selling antiques and collectibles and some interesting stories. Now, the Donnelly Auctions Hour. Welcome to the Donnelly Auctions Hour. Thank you for joining us here on AM560 every Saturday at 1 o'clock. I'm Susan. I'm here with Randy Donnelly, and we are the owners of Donnelly Auctions in Union, Illinois, just 60 miles west of Chicago. You should come out and visit us. It's uh, never a dull moment out in (laughs) Union, Illinois. Uh, We're here today to talk about planes, trains, and automobiles, and maybe motorcycles. (laughs) There you go. So usually what we talk about, Randy, is what's been going on this week, and, you know, it's already... A whole week has gone by, and I can't remember what we did yesterday. There's been so much stuff. Um, But I was gone. I was in Nashville at at my dad's celebration of life and learned so much about my relatives. And one of my uncles is the surviving member of the the invasion on Normandy, which I didn't even know that. You know, that's uh, so interesting that uh, all all these years you did not know that. Did not know that. And that's really what we do is is history right. and so much family history mm-hmm. and so so many times susan uh, families are you know they're passing the history on because uh, either there's nobody left in the family to uh, to hang on to it or how do you display a lot of this stuff i mean right. uh, uh, just the other day um, a japanese flag came in a uh, world war 2 japanese flag and the the gentleman says you know my dad captured this uh, um, at, at, a, at a battle in World War II. And he said, how do I hang this in my house? How do, you know, what do I do? I've got it folded up in a drawer uh, all these years. And he said, I'd really rather pass it on to somebody who can display it and, and appreciate it for the exactly. historic significance right. that it has. Well, I know you, the first thing you asked me was, well, did you ask her if if she still has his uniform? (laughs) That I did. (laughs) Of course I did. Of course I asked her that. She says, no, we don't have the uniform anymore, but I do have his purple heart. So I'm glad that that is still in the family because I did not know that. Yeah. A lot of stuff happening this week at Donnelly Auctions. We just wrapped up the camera auction in Arlington Heights. They're still yeah. packing all that stuff. There was so much. Every single item sold. And so hundreds much of and it. Hundreds of so it. So much of it went overseas. Yeah. But and you optics, know, you know, uh, anything in optics generally does uh, have a big market in uh, in in Korea and China and uh, yeah, uh, across the hugely successful Asia. auction did did way better than than we had thought, which was good. Mm-hmm. And so I want to put just a little shout out to our shipping department who has been working uh, very hard to get those items shipped out to everybody. So now this week, we're working on the September Firearms and Military Auction, which is September. It's today. It's today. It's today is September 23rd. Mm-hmm. September 23rd, Firearms, Ammunition, Gun Accessories. Still, it's, it's not too late to come on out to Union because we have over 800 lots. We're going to be there till I don't know. Eight o'clock. We're here nine late o'clock tonight. tonight. Yeah, and, and, then, and then all day tomorrow we've got military tomorrow. relics. Yes. Uh, which is uh, some fantastic military relics: daggers, helmets, uniforms. Yeah, the German motorcycle. And um, an interesting uh, scenario. I have just heard that the uh, state of Illinois is proposing a ban oh, on yes. military helmets. Um, so if you are a, a collector of military relics and, and don't want to see that happen, um, you know, get a hold of your uh, congressman and uh, yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, let them know that military collecting um, is, you know, it, it's quite a hobby. And uh, helmets, of, of course, is something Historic. that really does not need to be banned. Nobody's using World War II helmets in crimes today, but uh, that's... Hmm. Uh, that's yeah, up they're to mostly you. talking about body armor and things like that, but they're throwing military helmets as part of it. Exactly, and mm. and that will definitely affect the hobby. So right, so the military auction and firearms this weekend all we day tomorrow. Yeah. Five hundred firearms. So still, oh, even today. though it's one yeah. o'clock today, there's still many more to go. You can come on out to Union. Uh, check our website at donleyauctions.com. You can give us a call at 
if you want to throw some absentee bids in right away or if you want to do a phone bid, give us a call. Yeah. Um, to, or just get online get right online. now at Auctions. You don't have to get dressed. You don't have to leave. Just get online at TonleyAuctions.com. <laughs> we have our own. No. You There's don't. a visual for you, Susan. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but the doors open at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning for the military auction. Auction starts at 10. Mm-hmm. Call us with any questions. And in the meantime, merchandise just keeps uh, rolling in. So thank you for that. Uh, uh, the, the guys are out right now picking up a... Uh, uh, a 1936 Chevy, uh, totally restored. It's always fun to, to find these things still hanging oh. around. I mean, this has been restored uh, uh, probably 40 years ago, and it's uh, been in somebody's 36 garage. 36 Chevy. What kind of car? Is, what kind of car is it? A 36 Chevy. It's a, it's a, two, it's a, do- a two, two door, door sedan. Okay, two yeah. door sedan. Thank you. I need and to, the visual on that. <laughs> two doors always do better than four doors, um, and uh, coupes and converts are. Are always uh, the, the best, uh, but this is a uh, a two door sedan. It'll, it'll really do well. It uh, even though it's a little later uh, than the uh, Bonnie and Clyde era, it still has that look. Oh, nice! You know? And that's going to be in our November Fall Classic auction. So again, not too early to consign automobiles. Well, you know, yeah, you said at the uh, uh, beginning of the show uh, we're going to be talking about planes, trains, and. Uh, and automobiles, and yeah, uh, yes, we're always looking for cars. You know, I, I was mean, looking for planes too. Well, <laughs> I'd love to have an airplane. Who's uh, got something an airplane? that I, I wanted to talk about today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just just last night, what, what was the movie I was watching? Uh, uh, something uh, with uh, Robert Redford. Yeah, oh, what was that? He oh, was the great Waldo a, Pepper. Yeah, he was flying a uh, biplane, barn, barnstorming. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, we're always looking for biplanes. You know, year, years ago. Years ago, I mean, we were big on eBay in the early years of, of eBay when people didn't even know how to uh, to navigate the, the system, so to speak. And I got a phone call from a gentleman who told me uh, he worked for the Goodwill Company. And they, um, they, in fact, were looking for somebody at that point in time to run their, their eBay department for them because just that day – uh, he told me that somebody had donated a biplane <laughs> to Goodwill, wow. and they they couldn't put it in one of their stores, and they needed a way to sell it. So interesting um, that people, you know, were actually donating airplanes uh, to organizations uh, like Goodwill. Hmm. Um, but we uh, should auction them off, though. So we need to call. auction your yeah. aircraft. I mean, we can do that, and. Uh, uh, so whether it's a biplane or uh, a- any type of, of plane and accessories. I mean, there's so many people out in the Chicago area that uh, work around the airports and uh, work for the airlines. They are all collectors of some kind. Mm-hmm. Uh, props. Props do really well by us. Uh, and, and advertising posters and uh, just anything related to the airline industry. Aviation but, collections, uh, yeah. Uh, but we're always looking for full aircraft. That's in, right. In, so that was the airplane section of our radio show today, planes, trains, and automobiles. But I also want to add motorcycles to that. So we're going to talk to Mike in our next segment about motorcycles, Mike correct? Mike my okay. brother. We're yeah. going to talk about motorcycles. But um, back to planes. Um, any update on the aviation auction? Uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, the aviation auction is really coming along uh, so well. You know, we've got the complete uh, collection from uh, Parker Kramer, uh, who had license number four. We've talked about this before on the air. Uh, one of the early aviators, and uh, uh, he was a polar explorer. I mean, he crashed multiple airplanes and, in fact, in 1931, uh, lost his life uh, um, in a, a plane crash in, in the ocean. Mm. They they found uh, the, the wreckage and, um, uh, of course, unfortunately, he was not part of it. But uh, uh, so we still have his license that that was recovered from the the plane crash that was actually found in the water. We've got his original license number four uh, from the time uh, and all of his navigational charts and maps and photo albums and everything. What a, a grouping! So we're adding to that all the time. It's my understanding, right in the Chicago area, a gentleman called us with a Curtis aircraft engine, an old uh, radial engine uh, out out of a 
Curtis Airplane. And uh, so there's a lot of lot of good stuff out there. But ladies and gentlemen, you need to call us. You need to let us know what you have. That's we, right. We can't sell it if you don't call us. That's right. Call us at 815-923-7000. Better yet, email us at consign, C-O-N-S-I-G-N, at donleyauctions.com. We need to know where the items are located. What do you have? Any provenance? Uh, tell us what you have because we would like to tell you if there's any value in it and how much meat is on the bone and if we can put it up for auction for you. We're looking for some great items for our November Fall Classic. That is the second, third week in November, right, right before Thanksgiving. So we're going to talk about planes, trains, and automobiles, trains coming up next, motorcycles coming up next with Mike Donnelly. And of course, you know, my favorite subject are cars. I'm going to touch base on that a little bit more too. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Donley Auctions Hour right here every Saturday on AM 560. The answer, Mike Donley coming up next. They've been called auctioneers of antiques, collectors of cool, even veterans of vintage, and they can introduce themselves. Thanks for listening. This is the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. Welcome back to the Donnelly Auctions Hour. I'm Susan. I'm co-owner of Donnelly Auctions here with Randy Donnelly. And on this week's show, we're talking about planes, trains, and automobiles and motorcycles. And we've got Mike Donnelly with us, too. Hi, Mike. Thanks for joining us. How's it going today, everyone? Busy as always. Yeah, Mm -hmm. everything is good, but... um, uh, Susan uh, uh, wanted uh, us to talk about uh, uh, motorcycles today. So the uh, the whole question is, uh, what are we going to talk about with bikes today, Mike? You know, you uh, uh, you and I were both bikers, so to speak, uh, when we were teenagers, and we kind of had a uh, a, di- a different style uh, of bikes. And you were just talking to me, to, uh, you know, the other day about how collectible. The Hondas and Yamahas, Suzuki's, Kawasaki's, you know, um, these bikes were, and you called it the Japanese invasion. What? Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. You know, I mean, yeah, you and I were were on opposite ends of of, of the bikes. You were a Harley guy in, in the bigger uh, classic bikes, and I always enjoyed uh, uh, the Japanese motorcycles. And you got to think back to like the the sixties and seventies. Okay, you had the baby boomers just coming of age and started driving and riding and stuff like that. We're all going off to college and everything. And we were looking for cheap transportation and stylish transportation. Along come, you know, the Japanese motorcycle market was in its infancy, really. They were just, you know, not that long after World War II in the 60s. You know, you figure it's only 20 years after the war. And uh, they're rebuilding their industry. So they had motorcycles over there, and they test them in the, in the United States market. And boom, they take off because – in the 60s, the uh, image of motorcycles, 50s and 60s, was the Harley Riders, the Hells Angels, and such like that. Well, you know, none of the college people or any or young generation really wanted to be associated with that, but they were looking for, you know, that type of transportation. So along comes the Japanese motorcycles and just blindsides the American industry and in, the English industry, too. And these motorcycles just took off like crazy. I mean... I had one. You know, I had several. I, I rode Kawasaki's. I had a Honda. I had a Yamaha. Uh, and, and they were great. They were cheap. I mean, you could buy a motorcycle for five or 600 bucks. You know, they were reliable. Uh, they were stylish. I mean, remember all the crazy colors they'd come in? Turquoise, mm-hmm. gold, green. I mean, mm-hmm. it, they were beautiful machines. A lot of chrome on them and such. They were light compared to a Harley. I mean, what did Harley uh, run, Randy, uh, like a big full dresser? Six, eight hundred pounds, a thousand pounds? Oh, yeah. Every bit of that. And, uh, yeah. it, you know, you're right. It, it was a, a totally different uh, time. And and so many of the guys that, that we rode with were chopping their bikes. Remember, they'd take a uh, an old... Uh, uh, 1950s Harley and uh, totally uh, uh, remake it with extended friends and mm-hmm. and uh, a totally different you know single tank and uh, paint jobs. Wow, what what works of art those those bikes were. 
they you know, were. And what happened to all those? I mean, that'd be that'd be interesting. That'd be well, a whole other conversation. Like, where did all the jobs I've asked go? on the radio several times already. You know, uh, again, that very question: Where are all those bikes? Because I don't see them show up at auction uh, anywhere. You know, I, I look at motorcycle yeah. auctions all the time. Uh, so, were these bikes actually remodeled back into? You know, the, were the motors taken back off of them and and remade into? Uh, restored uh, vintage bikes. I don't know, but I I don't see the choppers as they used to no. call. Remember Chopper Palace? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And uh, uh, back back in the day, our friends rode with uh, um, the Chicago Outlaws, Hell's Henchmen. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, that was that was the the neighborhood. But yeah, you know when when you told me about this Japanese invasion of uh, uh, of bikes, I I, I was looking up some facts about Honda and that a bike that I used to completely laugh at, you know, when, when I was a teenager, I'd see somebody with a Honda step through and oh, I, yeah. I would just, <laughs> and I would just laugh and, and, and unfortunately make fun of uh, uh, this bike. But, you know, that, uh, that step through the, the super cub started in 1958 and they have sold a hundred million of those bikes. That's fifty cc engine. It's so reliable. I mean, you could you could push start that thing. But you know, um, the, one of the reasons we're talking about all these today is to let uh, our listeners know how valuable these bikes uh, have become and are still very very collectible. So um, th- there's a lot of them in attics or not attics, but uh, yeah. garages and basements uh, uh, through throughout the the city. And these are the type of things people need to call us about. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like uh, we always talk about you. The generation collects what you remember, you know, and maybe you couldn't afford uh, a Honda or a Yamaha, or maybe you had one and you just want one now, just, just you know, for, for nostalgia purposes. What do you I think, mean, yeah, Mike, they, they, the value of some of these bikes are today? Oh, you know, it's all over the board depending on the, the the model and everything. But it's not it's not unusual for these things to you know be bringing five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. Some of them. I mean, uh, you know, there were so many different models and such, but uh, they are definitely collectible. I mean, I well, mean, we, we we can't underestimate the importance of these things because by the 1980s they so dominated the market. They put out they put uh, a BMW uh, or not BMW, but uh, Norton uh, Triumph and uh, I think our BSA uh, out of business and just about just about buried Harley too by the 1980s. So yeah, yeah that's a um, fact. They, they were huge. And yeah. they, you know, one of the things, one of the biggest things about it was they were the ones that they had electric starts. None of the other bikes did. They all had the kick starts. <laughs> I was still kick starting my old bike, but uh, yeah. uh-huh. but, but then again, I had a uh, an old 1940 uh, Harley uh, from a, an old World War II bike that I used to ride around in the uh, uh, late 60s, early 70s, and thought I was a hot shot on that, but. Um, <laughs> But you know, you you mentioned a uh, value. I I think uh, we just got in a seventy one uh, Honda. I don't know uh, if it's a five hundred cc or or what uh, style that was. But when when we looked it up, I I think uh, we said that bike's going to go between five and seven thousand. So yep. it's it's no joke what some of the this stuff is worth. And I'll tell you, it wasn't that long ago, Mike. I was running an ad in the uh, in the newspaper. Old bikes wanted. And I was having people call me up and saying, hey, I, I've got a couple of motorcycles in the garage. Would you just get them out of here? They didn't even want anything for right. these bikes. Now, right. that's what we're here to warn people about is you've got money in those bikes. Do not give them away. At least call us for an evaluation. And um, there's no obligation. We'll, we'll give you our opinions as to what some of these things are worth. Yep, absolutely. We you, would love to see some remember- photos, too. You remember Honda's tagline? No. No, what was it? I'm you sure. meet the nicest people on a Honda. I remember that. That, oh. that, really, really, that, that, that wasn't up. from their automobiles? That was the motorcycles? That was the motorcycle. And I mean, that, that's, and they were marketing to the, the college kids, to the young people, and they, they bought it hook, line, and sinker. I mean, well, and, you brought up a good point, and that is advertising, Mike. And, and everything that goes along with motorcycles in advertising is really uh, good money, big money. 
Uh, you know, we're always advertising or promoting that we want porcelain signs, you know, the the old gas and oil signs and the bigger, the better and everything. But the uh, uh, the uh, plastic blown signs and everything from Hondas and Yamahas and everything, they still have tremendous value. So anything in advertising uh, for uh, motorcycles is is going to bring money. You know, and, and uh, not only the street bikes, too, but some of the early Japanese dirt bikes, those bring big money, too. Hmm. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. So, yeah, call us at 815-923-7000 or email us some photos at consign at donleyauctions.com. We would love to hear what kind of motorcycles you have, dirt bikes, even bicycle bicycles. Uh, we'd love to put them in our November Fall Classic Auction. Give us a call. We do have a nice uh, lineup uh, with motorcycles oh, already yeah. for November. I saw a 2003 Harley come in yesterday, that ultra classic you guys are trying to move around. The thing's a beast. It is. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's a, a big beautiful, bike. It's a beautiful, beautiful big beast, bike, yeah. however. Uh, yeah, that bike only has, what, uh, 5,000 miles something on like it or that. something like that. Yeah, that'll be uh, up in our November auction as well. It will. It will. And uh, so motorcycles we're still looking for, automobiles we're still looking for. And you mentioned that. An airplane. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, we need an airplane. Uh, call us with an airplane. But you mentioned 2003. So I do want to point out it doesn't have to be antique right. to be in this auction. I mean, uh, good uh, vintage or interesting pieces, uh, you know, we're always looking for. That's right. And, Mike, if you don't mind joining us on our next segment, we got to hit the train segment of it. We're going to talk about antique and vintage trains coming up in our next segment. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Donley Auctions Hour every Saturday here on AM 560, The Answer. Hope to see you at the auction in November. Listening to the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. Welcome back to the Donnelly Auctions Hour here with Susan, Randy Donnelly, and Mike Donnelly. We're talking about planes, trains, automobiles, and motorcycles. We have not touched on trains yet. And Randy said, I think people are going to think we're looking for full-size trains. Well, yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? If we want an airplane, let's get a train in here, too. You know, when, when we talk <laughs> about trains, it's primarily toy trains. However, um, we we do have a lot of memorabilia, complete uh, uh, light sets or, or advertising off of uh, full-size trains mm-hmm. and train bells and all the kinds steps of steps uh, and the lanterns and so, yeah, so all there, kinds of great stuff. Uh, the, there is a lot of uh, memorabilia for full size trains. We've never had a full size uh, uh, locomotive here. However, However, we do have a big steam um, uh, traction engine mm-hmm. um, and uh, steam engines that you know. The we, one that sunk into the asphalt. It was so, how heavy was that thing? 30,000 pounds, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen. Our, our forklift oh went right down into the asphalt the minute we picked it up. But we did get it inside. It's beautiful. It's restored. It's, yeah. it's a beautiful it's gonna piece. It's going to be for sale in November. Yeah. Perfect uh, for your living room. <laughs> Mike, we're going to talk about uh, uh, toy trains in a minute. But uh, uh, amusement park trains. Um, we've had so many of them over the years, and and of course mm-hmm. we've still got the the train from the Wild West Town, which was the the C P Huntington um, from Brookfield Zoo originally. It was from Brookfield. It was the first train that Brookfield Zoo ever had. Yeah, and, okay. and then it went where to the Wagon Wheel Resort, and then from the Wagon uh, Wheel uh, Resort yeah. to uh, to uh, Donnelly's Wild West Town. Um, yeah. What's uh, the situation w- with that train uh, right now? We're hanging on to it, but uh, uh, yeah, it could be it could be it could be offered for sale sometime in the future. I mean, good. There's, there's, well, we know Larry still Donnelly's the... still tinkering with it, yeah, keeping him busy <laughs> and out of it, trouble. Yeah, he's keeping it looking beautiful. It's all shiny. Right. It's, we got we got the engine in the warehouse. It's not outside, so yeah, it's in safe storage. So. Yeah. So, so ladies and gentlemen, if you have anything in uh, uh, amusement park trains. Uh, this is the place to sell them, and that's Donnelly Auctions. We will pick them up, uh, you know, these uh, amusement park trains. And it's surprising how many amusement park trains we do find uh, in the Chicago area. Um, uh, uh, it wasn't long ago uh, that we were in, in a garage, and the uh, the guy had like six engines in there. And it's like unbelievable that the stuff people collect. 
Well, not just trains. You're also looking for carousel rides, amusement park rides, not just trains, but carousel rides as well. Well, you know, because of the trains, I I instantly think of Riverview Park. You know, we talked about Donnelly's Wild West, but Riverview is where Mike and I went uh, as kids. Uh, that that park opened in about 1904. It was open from it operated from 1904 to 1967. It was open for 65 years. And, and of course, they had a train around the park. I think it was a, a real live steam uh, uh, train. Mm-hmm. But Mike, what was your favorite ride at uh, at Riverview? Uh, I would have to say Aladdin's Castle. That was my favorite there. Ah, oh, okay. the fun house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Randy yeah, was telling was, me a uh, story about one of the rides you went on that petrified you. Oh, I I hated I hated the the parachute ride. The oh my ride. god, that was pretty scary. <laughs> you know, you talk about a ride that probably would never meet the safety standards of, of a ride today. I mean, no, this was got a little board and uh, strapped onto it, and yeah. actually, the parachute towers were left over from World War II. That's what they trained parachute jumpers with. They would hoist them up. And and then really some let them free fall and the shoe would fill, fill up and that's that's how they train parachute jumpers and, and that's what I was telling Susan is when you got to the top and they dropped you you were literally in free fall because the parachute wasn't inflated right. yet so it right. had it had to catch air uh, <laughs> but before you actually you know then would come down uh, smoothly I was always afraid I'd fall out of that chair it just was such a little. Like you said, it was a board you sat on with a strap across your back. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was it, yeah. Craziness. Well, so There were 16 people died at that park over the years. Really? Most God. of them were from roller coasters and just people doing stupid stuff, I'm sure. But um, and Mike, I don't know if it was on the parachute ride or not. Mike, what was the roller coaster you owned off of uh, Riverview Park? What Was it the comic? Uh, that was the Flash. Oh, yeah. the, the Flash. flash. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, after, yeah. After the park, not during the park. But no, the, no. <laughs> after, after the park was salvaged. I think the only ride that has been, uh, uh, that remained in use after the, uh, the park closed in the 1960s was um, the, the big carousel, I think, went to one of the, uh, the Six Flags amusement parks. Oh, remember they they opened up Adventureland out in uh, where was that out on Lake Street in Addison or somewhere like that? Oh yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of the rides went out there. Oh, and that okay. was that was that was the first park really that pioneered one admission all rides are free. I'll be darned. Yeah. Huh. Here's a little trivia for you. Um, in 1972, you know, Bally, the manufacturing corporation, uh, had. An inspiration from that funhouse, Mike, that you talked about, Aladdin's Castle. They have a pinball machine. Uh, mm-hmm. The fireball. Well, they have that too, but the Aladdin's Castle oh, pinball machine was Castle? inspired by the funhouse at Riverview Park. So let's see if we can find one of those for our November auction. Okay, Who's got some ladies pinball and machines? gentlemen, call us. There's your challenge. Give <laughs> us a call at 815-923-7000. We will talk about antique and vintage toys in our next <laughs> Mike, we need you to come back for one more. Yeah, okay? we're not done yet. Talk oh. about planes, trains, and automobiles here on the Donnelly Auctions Hour every Saturday at 1 o'clock on AM 560, The Answer. Don't go anywhere, folks. And now, more of the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM 560, The Answer. Welcome back to the Donnelly Auctions Hour. Of course, we have interesting stories. That's how come we can never finish on topic here. Well, We're- yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. We got <laughs> off on a tangent. Uh, oh, Riverview okay. Park, we mentioned trains, and uh, we ended up with Riverview. But, you know, <laughs> I want to talk just a little bit more about We're Riverview. We're never going to get to because the Because Riverview kind of uh, is a... Uh, 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 it just has everything that we collect here at Donnelly Auctions. Mm-hmm. Riverview has, uh, you know... Uh, arcade machines, signage, uh, carousel horses, anything and everything that Riverview would have had, ladies and gentlemen, that you might have today is what we're looking for for Donnelly Auctions. Didn't you say they had a whole arcade full of mutoscopes and things like that, too, there? Absolutely. They they had a great arcade. Mm -hmm. You know, remember, that park was built, you know, so early in 1904 that by the 1920s, all that state-of-the-art great arcade equipment was was there. And, yeah, and where then is it? by the 1960s, they hadn't updated any of that yet. It was still all that old antique arcade equipment. Do you remember that their arcade there, Mike? 
Oh, absolutely! Yeah, it was great. It, the whole park was just fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> what a I'm, what a I'm, time I'm capsule! Walking it, I'm walking through it right now. I'm just my my mind's just going crazy. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's crazy, is for sure. So, uh, at any rate, <laughs> I just want to touch base real quick because we talk about things that come through the door all the time. Because our listeners are actually calling and emailing us with their collections, and one of the collections we had come in were antique toy trains. trains. Toy, toy trains. There were yeah. mo- are there models, right? Are they models mm-hmm. or toys? Because no, there's a difference. Toy trains. They're toy well, trains. actually, we have both. We have there both. are some models, but. Yes. Uh, but so, mainly uh, toy trains. I just want right to educate our listeners a little bit about the type of items that they might have that could be of value at auction. And, of course, the, the top three most popular brands are the American Flyer, Lionel, and Marks. And that surprised me because I never thought of Marks as being a, uh, a high-priced toy or even uh, that Just popular desirable. is what it says. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I do yeah, know. They were, they were, go ahead. No, no, you... No, they were definitely the lower lower price of the three. Right. You know, that was the affordable one with the cheap tin stamped uh, or tin litho stamped uh, cars and stuff. But. Mm-hmm. Right, and they can go anywhere from what twenty to two thousand dollars on the, some of these can, train yeah. sets. You know, when I think of high price trains, I always think of Markland. Markland, but, but Susan, Brothers, what, yeah. what were you telling me today about? Uh, oh yeah, one of the most expensive train sets that ever sold was the Lionel Standard set. It was mint in box, though, sold for $250,000. So there again is your challenge, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Call well, us with a $250,000 train there set. There you go. Well, what you want to look well, for. Was it, was it the blue, was it the blue, uh, blue streak or something like that? Or? I, I don't know. It didn't say exactly what it said, Lionel Standard Set. So, so we'll see. But um, what you want to look for, though, on your trains is the manufacturer's markings, of course. The original packaging is important. You want to check the train gauge, yeah. uh, whether any tracks included, because those were produced after 1881. So you want to see if there's any tracks. Talk to an expert, of course. You can always talk to someone here at Donley Auctions. Yep. And we've got, we've got experts that can really help right. you in the right direction with your train And, sets. of course, the condition. It's very important. Well, you know, you mentioned mint in box. Uh, uh, Susan boxed is is always the best because there are so many trains out there. Everybody saved mm-hmm. their trains, and there's boxes and boxes and boxes of. So truly, condition is everything. What sells for any money is, of course, uh, new old stock NOS, new old stock, and or uh, mint in box. That's right. And one little uh, bit of information I learned about toy trains, because being with in a family with sisters, we did not play with trains. I know nothing about toy trains. We played with Barbies, that's for sure. But the trains came out before the locomotive was even produced in 1784. And the trains were the model trains were used as representations of what a full size train could actually look like. So um, they used them as guides during the initial production of trains and the entire railway system. That's wow. how they came about. Wow. Interesting stuff, huh? What's your thoughts on trains, Mike? What uh, what would you uh, tell our listeners to look for? Uh, size, yeah. You know, the, 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 the newer stuff, you know, the HO and the N-gauge, it's collectible. But if you're looking for the money, you got to go back to the early, early stuff, the standard size, the, yeah. the big, huge trains. And one other manufacturer that many people don't think about when they think of trains is the Buddy L Garden Railway. That's oh, a yeah. That's a good one, yeah. <laughs> That's probably the biggest train out there. Yeah, the kids could actually sit on it, yeah. It, uh, the outdoor Garden Railway, yeah, the Buddy L. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of toy trains, model trains, and uh, antique toys in general for our November auction. November. We're going to do, an, I yep. think, an entire day on it. Antique and vintage toys. So call us if you have toys of any kind. I mean, whether they're... I like the wind-up kind. Wind-ups wind are, are, toys. are always collectible, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, uh, whether it be toys, uh, uh, you know, trains, planes, automobiles, I mean, uh, any type of toys we're looking for. And right on into the 50s and 60s I was going to say, some of that stuff is pretty vintage from like the 70s. That yeah. we have, too. So you think that's going to sell well, huh? Oh, my God, yes. Because okay. we, we keep saying it's what people remember. And some of the real old stuff is getting too old. So uh, don't discount any of the stuff from the 70s by any means. 
That's right. And you know who uh, was a famous train enthusiast collector? Oh, I can Frank Sinatra. It. Frank okay. Sinatra built a special building onto his house for his 1949 train station layout. Just like your dad did, huh? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, uh, Mike, thanks for uh, coming on today. Um, we're going to... Uh, pleasure as always, yeah. Uh, yes, thanks. We've got Good information. one more segment, but we'll be telling our yes, listeners don't how, go to, anywhere, how to consign. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about the auction this weekend again and upcoming auctions. So stay tuned with your pen in hand so you can write down our phone number and our website. But you're listening to the Donnelly Auctions Hour here every Saturday at 1 o'clock with Susan and Randy and all of our interesting stories. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're not done yet. You're listening to AM560, The Answer. The Donnelly Auctions Hour continues now on AM560, The Answer. Welcome back to the Donnelly Auctions Hour. Just wanted to touch base real quick. We do have an auction going on right now as we speak in Union, Illinois. We're just 60 miles west of Chicago. Hop on I-90. Come on out. Uh, we'll have donuts, coffee, pizza, beer, and wine. All complimentary. That's a you good know, reason to come out. The Susan, we're, we're always uh, promoting on our show what we're looking for for auctions. And uh, sometimes it's easy to forget that our listeners are also buyers. That's right. They come to our auctions. And so I, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen, that we don't talk more about how you can uh, buy from us or uh, uh, acquire through auctions. We're always promoting what we There's want. Many, so. many options. For example, like today is our firearms, ammunition, and gun accessories auction. It started at 10 a.m., but we have 800 lots. We're going to be there all day. We have over 500 firearms. All you need to do is come out to the auction to Union, show us your FOID card and your driver's license. There's no admission, and you come on in. There's a buyer's premium. But it's, it's less expensive to come out to the auction than it would be to bid online. However, if you don't want to drive out, you can bid online. Go to DonleyAuctions.com. And there is a button there that says Firearms or Military. You click on that, and it takes us to our very own bidding platform on DonleyAuctions.com. Now, there, the bidding... Um, the buyer premium is a little bit higher because you're paying for the convenience of bidding online and not having to drive out by us, right? Sure. So you could do that. What I also recommend is give us a call at 815-923-7000 to submit an absentee bid. And all that means is that you can give us your lot numbers and tell us what your maximum bid is, and we will bid up to that amount And that saves on your the behalf. online fee. That's right. It saves you the online so fee. So look at, look at our auctions online. Uh, see what you want to bid on, and then call us with your bids, and, right. and we can place the bids for you. You know, in some of these higher-end items, anything that's valued over $500, I'd be happy to do a phone bid for you. So I would just be on the phone with you, bidding on your behalf. Yep, yep. Every time you say you want to get in <laughs> on a bid, um, again, you call us at 815-923-7000. I'll be happy to submit and, that to our auctioneer as tomorrow, well. Tomorrow's auction is our military relics. There's all kinds of... Uh, uh, great I know. Where items. do you begin? I mean, these two items right here we've talked about already: the yeah. flag and the mo- the sidecar. We, we've got oh, a, a, a replica. Um, well, it's an um, operating replica. It's a motorcycle uh, that's made to look like a German World War II uh, motorcycle. It has a sidecar, a uh, good running vehicle. If you want to use this for reenacting, I mean, we've got items from the the Civil War period. Uh, we've got uh, World War One, World, World War Two, uh, Vietnam, oh, yeah, American, German, Japanese, you name it, we have it. The good news is we have so much stuff that we have to do another military and firearms auction in December. So it's not too early to call us to consign. What's the number? 815-923-7000. We would love to hear what kind of military items you have. You know why? Because we have some military experts on staff with us who can answer all of your questions. So what your options are, come out to the auction, go online, put an absentee bid in, put a phone bid in. Yep. Right? And all you need is a driver's license and a FOID card if you want to handle the guns. But other than that, we try to keep it very simple. And if you do have any questions, a lot of people have never bid before. And they're just confused sometimes about the process. Well, we try to keep it very simple. There's no hidden fees um, you know, and we'll walk you through it. We have great staff in the office who will be very patient and will answer and, all of your questions. And both of us are there. We'd like to meet you. Yeah, come on come out and meet out. us. Mm-hmm. That's right. This weekend. And then uh, don't forget about the November auction. So 
go check us out at DonleyAuctions.com. You're listening to us on AM560 every Saturday, but for now, I'm Susan. And I'm Randy Donley, and And we'll we'll see you at at the the auction. auction. Thanks for listening to the Donley Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. Check out all the latest information on upcoming auctions and collectibles at DonleyAuctions.com. And while you're there, you can contact someone about buying or selling your collectibles or estates. That's DonleyAuctions.com.